This video's featured species is probably the queen of scary creatures. The adult female black widow has the most potent venom of any creature in North America and is one of the most feared spiders on the planet. But is her evil reputation deserved? We'll explore that in this in-depth video. And just know that these spiders are all around us. In fact, you're almost certainly within 30 feet of a black widow right now as you're watching this, and you may not even know it. <coughs> If I dunk this basketball, you subscribe. First off, I want to make it clear that the hand in the thumbnail with several Black Widow spiders on it is not mine. That hand belongs to Nick Kruger, the administrator of the Spiders of Oklahoma Facebook page. Nick has a lot of experience in handling spiders. And thank you, Nick, for allowing me to use the photo. The Black Widow is one of two spiders in North America, the bites of which are medically significant, the other being the Brown Recluse. And just like the Brown Recluse, the Black Widow is often misunderstood and gets a bad rap. Not only are these spiders not as deadly as many people think, but Black Widows rarely enter houses. At least that's been the case with me. However, I keep a very clean house, and I imagine a filthy house or one that is overly cluttered may attract black widows, but I am not certain. And don't get me wrong, when I say they get a bad rap, a bite from an adult female black widow isn't a good thing for sure, as they can be medically significant, but bites are a rare occurrence and can often be avoided. During an interview with Live Science, Catherine Scott, an arachnologist, said the bites are often not serious. Quote, yes, black widows are venomous, but they pose very little danger to humans, she said. The majority of bites that do occur are not serious. People either recover with no intervention at all, or they go to the hospital and are treated and then are fine." Unquote. I once watched a video about black widows which was hosted by an arachnologist. In the video, she mentioned that more people are killed in the United States by Christmas trees than by black widows. I thought to myself, that's good to know. But then I wondered, how are people killed by Christmas trees? Are these rogue Christmas trees that are seeking revenge after being cut down? Do they arm themselves before attacking? No, that dinner's the minutes is quite the hoot. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to know, so I looked it up. It appears most deaths involving Christmas trees occur when a dry tree catches fire. Best to make sure that the tree bowl stays filled with water, but doing so can also pose a danger. It appears that many people die each year while watering the tree, but that's almost always due to lights being plugged in and people being electrocuted. Keep those trees watered, but unplug the lights first. I'm sure glad I use artificial trees, but I digress. Back to spiders. In every encounter I've had with black widows, they've been more afraid of me than I was of them. Take Sandy, for instance. Sandy is a widow that lives in a crevasse between the ground and my home's foundation. She is a scaredy cat for sure, and flees nearly every time she sees me. One thing I've learned while studying Sandy for so long, among many other things, is that black widows have excellent eyesight. She has fled upon seeing me when I was at least eight feet away from her. Additionally, when I photograph or film her, she is often covered with sand, hence the name. The black widow received its name because of its coloring and the fact that the female will kill a male after mating. This is common knowledge. However, although this detail is shared quite a bit, it rarely occurs. A female might kill and consume a male after mating, maybe 2% of the time. Like I said, rare. There are anywhere from 1,500 to 2,500 black widow bites reported in the United States each year. Pretty rare considering there are about 333 million people in the country. 
In 2010, there were 2,168 reported black widow bites in the United States, with 892 cases treated in healthcare facilities, according to entomologists at the University of Florida. The National Park Service reports that often the bite is dry, meaning it does not inject venom into the wound, and the bite of the black widow is not as fatal as most are led to believe, according to the Park Service. A venomous bite by the female, only adult females have fangs large enough to penetrate human skin, rarely results in necessary medical treatment, and is even less likely to cause death. The Park Service reports that no recorded death by a black widow bite has been reported in the United States since 1983. However, if you think you may have been bitten, it would be better to err on the side of caution and seek medical attention. An envenomed bite may cause severe lower back pain, joint pain, headache, stomach cramps, fever, nausea, and delirium. But these spiders would much rather keep their distance from humans, and they are beneficial as they eat many things people consider pests. Another good thing is that these spiders would rather flee than bite. Black widow bites almost always occur when the spider cannot escape, such as when someone accidentally grabs one or when she is trapped between clothing and human skin. A study conducted by scientists on western black widows revealed the spiders were most likely to bite when they were pinched along the entire length of the body. In most cases, poking the spider repeatedly with a finger wasn't enough to get it to bite, researchers found. Instead, the prodded black widows in the study often ran away, played dead, or flicked a few strands of silk at their quote-unquote attackers. When walking on solid ground, female black widows do not move gracefully, often appearing ill or injured. I would imagine it's due to the large abdomens that they carry around. However, when on the web, they are lightning quick, like Sandy here. And speaking of webs, black widows do have them. However, their webs are not beautiful works of art like the ones created by orb weavers. They appear haphazard, like they were created by a lazy creature. But there is a method to this madness. The web is very strong, and a black widow builds it just the way she wants it. Once a creature gets caught in a black widow web, it rarely escapes. Here is Sandy with one of her favorite preys, a June beetle. From years of experience, I can spot a black widow web from a mile away. And that's a slight exaggeration. But that's how I discovered Sandy. I was walking along and saw this mass of thick webbing and knew right away that there was a southern black widow nearby. Now, there are three species of black widow that can be found in the United States. Southern black widow, northern black widow, and western black widow. For this video, I am featuring the most common of the three in my area, the southern black widow. The bodies of both genders are shiny and hairless. Females and males are not similar in appearance, however. For the most part, the male is not all black, and the adult male is smaller in size than the female by quite a bit. Most southern black widows look just like the ones in my photos and video footage. However, some females may have red markings on the backs, like Sandy. To be honest, it's best not to worry about the red hourglass and the coloring that may or may not be there. Just look at it. This is what a black widow looks like. Glossy black with long legs and large abdomens. Sadly, the bull jumping spider, probably the most gentle creature on earth, is sometimes confused with the black widow. For one thing, it is black. For another, while most have white markings, some can have red spots, so they get mistaken for black widows. But look at these spiders. To me, they are easily distinguishable. Black widow spiders are commonly found around homes, gardens, garages, outbuildings, barns, and other man-made structures. They seek out warm, dry places, but rarely venture inside homes. Now, I said it's rare, but not impossible. Really, the best way to avoid attracting spiders into a home is to keep the home clean and free of clutter. Indoors, spiders prefer dusty, undisturbed areas. Eliminating food sources is also good. Insects such as crickets and roaches will attract spiders. According to the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, in the summer, black widows are known to set up house near porch lights in order to make an easy meal of the insects that gather there. I can relate to this as I had one spend the summer under a rarely used chair on my porch. She was quite a good hunter and had many babies. The female black widow, like many spiders, grows her eggs prior to mating. Once she receives what she needs from the male, she will often lay eggs very soon afterward. Eggs are laid in a protective sack, which she creates using her silk. Each sack can hold hundreds of young. The female black widow can be quite aggressive for a few days after laying her eggs. She can be a bit touchy during that time, and will attack if she thinks the eggs are in danger. Egg sacs are round, and while white at first, are usually beige in color by the time the young are ready to hatch. To me, egg sacs look like Kicks cereal, only slightly larger in size. Once the spiderlings leave the egg sac, they often gather together in a webbing structure for a few days before setting off on their own. 
Black widow spiderlings sometimes cannibalize each other, but this can be lessened if a mother takes care to make sure all the eggs hatch around the same time, which she is quite capable of doing. Black widows eat insects, particularly flies, crickets, and even cockroaches. They also eat caterpillars and other arachnids, such as scorpions and other spiders. Here, Sandy is feasting on a June beetle. She has had success in trapping them, and they seem to provide plenty of nourishment. To help keep populations down, remember that black widows are attracted to tall grass and junk. They like brick piles, brush piles, junk cars, etc. Also, watch out for these spiders and stacks of firewood. Probably best to handle firewood while wearing leather gloves. Inspecting each piece is also a good idea. However, keep gloves in resealable plastic bags when not in use. Do not leave shoes and boots on porches. It's best to store them on a shoe rack indoors. Female black widows may live a few years, while males may live a few months. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Oh, what'd you do that for? Ow! What the f <laughs> The National Park National Pork Council? The adult female black widow has the most potent venom of any creature in North America and is one of the most speared fi Speared fighters? <sighs> no, that dinner's the minutes is quite the hoot. Yes. <laughs>